As a proud owner of a NZXT Guardian 921 back in the AMD FX days, my nostalgia sensors went through the roof when I got my first piece of NZXT hardware for the last decade. So today, our little family of small all-in-ones will get a new member, the NZXT Kraken M22. Before we get to microwaving this thing, let's quickly go over the specs and the included stuff. As probably guessed from the box size, the M22 is a 120mm red with a 120 fan on top. And for what I can tell, this should be the only 120 cooler that NZXT is offering right now. The included fan is called Customizable, which at first led me to believe that I'm supposed to spray paint this thing, but apparently you can also just remove this little piece around the fan and get it in a different color. Nice little gimmick, but I prefer RGB. On a side note, the fan does not have that airflow orientation arrow and even though the manual clearly shows that the NZXT logo has to be on the inside, I can guarantee you somebody out there will do it wrong. So maybe just put it on. As for the unnamed pump, it is supposed to run at 3000 RPM but there is no information about the noise level or anything else. On the compatibility side, you'll find every bracket that you need inside of the box and as long as you follow the instructions within the manual, you'll be able to mount this to basically every AMD CPU out there, from the newest AM4 to the oldest AM2, so the older Phenom and Athlons. For Intel, the box states that you can go with all of the 11.5 something, the 2011s and 2066. But when it comes to the newest 10th gen, I read that every 11.5 something is also compatible with the uh, 1200, so you should be good to go with the newest Intel. Now something that I already wanted to mention when it comes to the installation part. Compared to the Kuga Aqua and Cooler Master, Master Liquid, the M22 is definitely the hardest one to install. So with this one, at least for AMD, you'll get this backplate where you have to install some of these screw type things on the most outer holes and then you replace the original backplate of your mainboard. A little bit annoying, especially when you know it can be easier, but what can you do? Now, if we take the all-in-one, there is one big difference to the stuff you're used to. Instead of putting the pump into the water block, like we usually do, NZXT went with a different approach and placed it inside of the radiator. Now, when it comes to water flow, I don't see any reason why this should be any worse than the other approach. But when it comes to the heat dissipation of the radiator, there are a couple of arguments. But if we take the fan, we can see that the middle section is blocked off by the fan motor anyway. So overall, I do think that the pump placement will not make any difference at all, or maybe a degree, but nothing outside of the margin of error. And just like the other all-in-ones that we've tested so far, the tubes are sleeved and are adjustable at the water block, and with 400 millimeters, the M22 provides the longest tubes. And now, let's finally get to the water block, because NZXT is really putting other all-in-ones to shame when it comes to their design. Instead of some random RGB cutout, NZXT went all-in and put a mirror in here. But this is not some ordinary mirror meant to reflect your messy room. No, seriously, get your ass up and clean that. No, this is a RGB infinity mirror, controllable to the color of your liking. Now the whole thing is powered by a little mini USB port in the back, which is also provided in the bag of goodies. And it can simply be hooked up to any USB 2.0 header on your mainboard. And from there you can then install NZXT's uh, cam software and just play around as you like. And before anybody asks in the comments if you can change that NZXT text in the front, no, you cannot. That's a real cutout, but there are NZXT all-in-ones that do have something like a little monitor instead. Now, two things that I really wanted to mention about the whole thing here. First, if somebody has trouble to get the cam program to recognize the RGB mirror, simply remove and reattach the USB cable on the water block while the PC is running. A bit like removing and reinstalling a USB drive. That fixed it for me. But please, for the love of God, do not rip out the USB header on the mainboard. And secondly, because the water block is getting its power from a USB 2 port, 
there is a strong possibility that it will be always on, because USB headers usually have some power coming out of them, even though the PC is off. Now, I know there are Mamos out there that do cut power off for everything, but it is still possible. Okay, so to sum up the design part, especially if you compare the M22 to the other ones, it's pretty clear who's the winner here. I mean, it's, it's pretty hard to compete with that. But because design is always a thing up to the buyer, let's just say I like it, but before we give the crown to anybody, let's have a look at the performance. For this, we removed the pre-applied thermal paste and used some of my Alpha Cool, because I'm out of Arctic Silver, and we've installed each of the all-in-ones on a 3600X locked at 4.2 GHz, and then we started with a few tests. First off would be all-in, so we fired up heavy load and started to grill our CPU. And after a good 30 minutes run, we found that the M22 actually won this round with one single degree Celsius. But of course, this is still within the margin of error, so I would say that the Cougar Aqua and the M22 are somewhat the same when on a full load. But this cannot be told about the noise they produced, so let's take a look at each all-in-one under full load. And clearly the Cooler Master Master Liquid takes this round by a lot, with the NZXT on the second place. Now of course, this test was a bit unfair because fans can run at different speeds and have many other differences, so let's take a look at efficiency. For this we simply reduced the fan speed bit by bit until the CPU stayed at a steady 70 degrees C. For the Cougar Aqua, this point was at 26%. The Cooler Master Master Liquid had to be set a bit higher at 28% and the NZXT M22 could get as low as 25%. And here again their respective sound comparisons. Now to not only have a comparison in a open air environment, we also installed each of the all-in-ones into the Asa Hive case with the Intertech RS14 set in the front and the IO in the back. Then we set the front fans to a minimum and just let the IO keep the CPU at 70 degrees C. And here are the results. So in a real world environment, none of these all-in-ones are really distracting for a meter away. But if you listen very closely, the M22 is the least distracting cooler. So when it comes to performance and efficiency in a real-world environment, NZXT is the winner for now, even though it was just by a single degree. So to sum everything up, in my opinion, this is a great product. Build quality is amazing, design is out of this world, and everything has that NZXT cleanness going on. Now on the negative side though, I think the arrow should definitely be on the fan, because there will be people out there doing it wrong. And I think that it is a pity that they didn't make the M22 mountable with the original AM2 brackets. It would just make it way easier and convenient. Now on the price side, the Kraken can be bought for around $80 on Amazon US and 70 euros in Europe. Affiliate and manufacturer links in the description. So it is a bit on the pricier side compared to the other two all-in-ones. But other than that, there is really not much to lag about. I think price to performance is still alright, especially because the RGB on the water block, in my opinion, does deserve the higher price tag than just a single card app. So this should sum it up for the NZXT M22 review. I hope you've enjoyed it, but you can always leave your opinion with a thumb up, thumb down or the comment section below. And make sure to be subscribed because we still have a ton of gear coming, so stay tuned for that. But until then, have a look at one of these totally random videos.